Early morning training is something that we can all agree is pretty terrible when compared to afternoon or evening training. In terms of performance, the literature confirms this when we look at morning or evening training. Anecdotally, anyone who usually trains in the evening but tries a morning session can confirm how subpar a morning session feels. There's a couple of different reasons for this and a few actions you can take that will somewhat mitigate the effects of early morning training. The first area we need to look at is the hormonal response we experience in the morning. There's a variety of different cascades that happen, but there is two particular hormones that we should pay attention to. The first is cortisol. Researchers in 2014 looked at the effect of time of day and performance, hormonal and metabolic responses during 1000 meter cycling time trial. Their conclusion stated that performance was impaired in the morning compared to the evening. Morning exercise was performed in a less favorable metabolic environment with elevated insulin, cortisol and reduced plasma glucose. Cortisol is an interesting one and not just in relation to exercise. Cortisol peaks early in the morning prior to waking and is at its highest point throughout the day from which it slowly decreases as the day goes on. Cortisol often gets a bad rap and is known as the stress hormone but obviously plays a vital role in our body. The exact reason for cortisol peaking prior to waking is unclear but it is a well documented response known as the CAR or cortisol awakening response. The issue with cortisol prior to training is that cortisol is typically associated with post-training response and catabolic effects. Now, don't get it twisted, cortisol post-intense training is almost certainly necessary and you shouldn't look to reduce its impact. It's a common response to training and is embedded in the exercise adaption pathways. However, for our specific purposes here, heightened cortisol prior to training is something that we don't want. It doesn't put us in the best environment to go about performing high intensity training at our best. The first thing we can do as early morning trainers is get early morning sunlight into your eyes. If we look at the acute effects of bright light exposure on cortisol levels, we find that the bright light exposure reduced cortisol levels on the descending phase of cortisol rhythm. This suggests that exposure to morning sunlight may have a greater effect on adrenal cortex physiology than previously recognized. The descending phase is the morning, so remember we mentioned that cortisol peaks upon waking and then increases as the day goes on. This descending phase is early morning, just when you're about to go training. So first positive action is get some sunlight into your eyes. The second thing we can do to impact cortisol in the manner we want is to routinely consume carbs prior to training. Now interestingly, this depends on what food you eat and how regularly you consume these foods, plus what you do after you consume your carbs. If you're a regular consumer of carbohydrates, your cortisol response goes down. Following this consumption of carbs, if training is undertaken, we see a further reduction in cortisol. So prior to training, if you habitually consume carbs, we'll start to see a positive trend, not statistically positive, but positive for your goals, i.e. a decrease in cortisol. There's a second benefit to consuming carbs in the morning, and that is due to the reduced plasma glucose levels. The relationship between carbohydrates and performance is well documented, as well as carbohydrates' anti-catabolic effect. Now, some people don't like the feeling of eating before early morning training, but in the interest of performance, it's worth your while if you can set this routine up. The second hormone of interest in the morning is the presence of melatonin. The issue here is that combating the effects of melatonin is quite tough. Melatonin levels are highest when we're sleeping and going to sleep as that's one of its primary roles. Melatonin acts as a CNS suppressant which is something we do not want prior to training, especially not high intensity maximal performance training. Upon waking, we still have melatonin present in our body and this plays a role in your ability to perform in the morning. The issue here is that there is cost to the options available to reduce the effects of melatonin. This is likely one of the things we need to accept as being early morning trainers. Caffeine is probably your best option here, but this comes with its own negatives. It's not ideal to rely on stimulants prior to every single training session, while caffeine tolerance is a reliable phenomenon, and increasing the level of caffeine interspersed with breaks and caffeine comes with its own issues. Now, for a lot of people, the downsides of caffeine are something they're happy with, and it's a worthwhile compensation for the effects of early morning training. The other option is ephedrine, but I am certainly not recommending this, even though it is OTC in a lot of countries. The second area we need to look at is your body temperature. Typically in the morning, our body temperature is at its lowest. This is a problem for a few reasons. Lower body temperature provides for slower neuroconductivity velocities. Slower velocities will reduce reaction time, quickness, hand-eye coordination, and the speed of and magnitude of motor unit recruitment. A lower body temperature is also related to reduced vasodilation. 
An increase in core body temperature increases our vasodilation, which improves blood supply and substrate elimination when we need to combat the metabolic effects of training. A lower body temperature will also decrease the pliability of our tendons. A reduction in their elasticity will reduce their ability to magnify the force produced from our muscles, resulting in decreased performance. The first step to combating the decreased body temperature is pretty simple. Warm up. Take the word literally and go after it with vig. Actually do a warm up. Do some activities that increase your core body temperature sufficiently. Dynamic stretching for a prolonged period of time plus some light aerobic exercise is the best way to go about this. You can rely on your first exercise to increase your temperature, but it's not a sufficient long-term plan due to the intercession differences in exercise selection coupled with the subpar performance you will achieve in the less than ideal condition morning training puts you in. Using extra sets of the first exercise can work, but you're unnecessarily fatiguing the muscles involved when you could do just a little exercise, especially if you're a strength athlete. Typically somewhere in the region of 15 minutes should suffice. The second step actually ties in with cortisol combat. An additional benefit of eating food prior to training is that you can use this as a tool to increase your body temperature. When you eat, the thermic effect of processing foods increases your body temperature. You may have experienced this during meat sweats or if you're a vegan when you eat lots of grass. Finally, you can briefly expose yourself to the cold to initiate an endogenous heating process. The key here is brief. If you expose yourself for too long, you'll chill your body temper too much and will not be heated sufficiently in time for training. A brief two to three, a brief two to three minute trip in cold water should be enough to start your body's engine and begin heating faster than it would otherwise. Your body's heating and cooling tactics are not immediate and take time to switch. So if you use this tactic the right amount of time before training, plus coupled with some snacks and a good warm up, you should be in a good place to train. I hope this helps. But more still, I prefer if you could just train in the evening.